Well, you can hear lusty voices there. From Archie McPherson, very warm welcome to our coverage of the Cup Winners' Cup game between Shelburne of Ireland and Kilmarnock of Scotland. Meeting in the Cup Winners' Cup game, and as befits a nation which does love informality, the Irish Prime Minister, Bertie Ahern, will simply stroll out of his house tonight with his pals and come down to the stadium to see Shelburne and Kilmarnock. And to see if the Dublin side can pull back that 2-1 lead which Kilmarnock enjoy at the moment. Although perhaps the word enjoy is slightly inappropriate as Kilmarnock struggled to get that lead which they achieved in the last few seconds of the first game. And a scorer of these goals, Paul Wright, is not fully fit and he's on the bench tonight. So I think I could substitute the word uh, trembling on the lead rather than uh, enjoying it at the moment with no disrespect uh, to Kilmarnock. And would you believe that 69 years ago, when Kamarok made the first jaunt abroad, it was to here, to Shelburne, that they came to play the first foreign match. So here we are. You could hardly call them old buddies. It was a pretty competitive game, the first one. Slight uh, breeze, which has lessened, and I think this is going to turn out to be an exciting game given the attitude of both managers all right I don't suspect that any of these teams either of these teams will figure in the final we're having here the introduction to the teams the Lord Mayor of Dublin Alderman John Stafford accompanied by Finbar Flood the chairman of Shelbourne and the Kilmarnock uh, chairman Ronnie Hamilton who has an historic connection not only with Kilmarnock, but with European football, because he scored the first ever European goal for his club way back when they played in that very famous game against Eintracht Frankfurt back in 64. And there's the uh, Kilmarnock supporter, Kilmarnock traditionally in uh, blue and white, and the red of Shelbourne. As I said about Ronnie Hamilton, he scored a goal against Eintracht. What a remarkable game, that. They were 3-0 down from the first leg, and then they were a goal down in the first couple of minutes of that match. So that made it four, and he went on to win by five goals to one in the night and knocked Eintracht out. And the man who made his debut as a 16-year-old lad in that game was the manager who, uh, a man who's now manager of Dundee United and who, with the Motherwell, won the, the Scottish Cup and went into the Cup Winners' Cup, and that's Tommy McLean. So... There's a lineage here which uh, stretches way back. Times have changed, of course. Kilmarnock are now playing in a, a, an utterly renovated stadium, a beautiful stadium, surely one of the best of the provincial clubs anywhere in the UK. And, uh, of course, they've had the money problems. They cannot go out as Rangers and Celtic can in Scotland and by anybody they like it of Shelburne. They come from a nation now which, whose football in general has been rejuvenated. And you can mention one man for that. And of course, I mean Jackie Charlton. The success of the national team has permeated right through to grassroots. The Republic of Ireland has been famous, of course, for the, I think I'm right in saying, the conflict at times between their, their national traditional games, getting football and uh, hurling. But I think a lot of fans have been wooed over to Association Football. There's the Shelburne side, which is exactly the same as started a game against Kilmarnock in the first leg, and they played very well indeed. Kilmarnock had to uh, pull back and get that winner very late on in the game, so it is very evenly balanced tonight. Good support uh, come over from Kamarnock. There's the side. A very colourful goalkeeper they have, Dragoj Lekovic from Montenegro. Played for Red Star Belgrade initially. Gus McPherson had five years with Rangers uh, before he came to Kamarnock. And uh, the long standing favourite of the club, Ray Montgomery, 35 years of age captain of the side started his career with uh, Newcastle and indeed many of the players on both sides curiously enough have had experience of English league football 
And perhaps the most famous of all the Kamano players, of course, the man who's playing number 22 tonight, Pat Nevin. Sure, many viewers in England will remember the scintillating performances of Pat Nevin, a traditional uh, Scottish winger, you know, diminutive, tricky, fast. Played 28 times for Scotland. And apart from that, was chairman of the Professional Footballers Association in England for several years. So, Pat is uh, a considerable talent both on and off the field. Well, last night uh, we were in the stadium in Paris, the Parc de Paris, and we are seeing both sides there for over 24 hours of European football. No, we're not getting ourselves on. I'm quite sure the level here will not reach that incredible level which you'll see after this game that we saw last night. But where the two games and where the four teams have something very much in common is commitment to win. And I think that is perhaps the most attractive element in football at any level. So, just to remind you again, this is Kamarnik in the white and blue. Irish team Shelburne, red and white, the ball touched forward there, chased after by Ali Mitchell, whipped away. Well, Kamarok uh, used to have a blue and white vertical stripe, but of course they've changed just to white and blue. Changed the sponsor, in fact. So the Irish attacking down that right-hand side. Shelburne looking quite aggressive. And indeed, I think they impressed people in the first game by being extremely fed. The man who made the move there was, in fact, a Frenchman, number two, Pascal Vodakin. The man from Paris. Well, we had a goal in the first minute and a half last night in the... Pas Prince Stadium, Irish will be after a quick one back, scored the goal, goal scored by Mark Rutherford was scored from way out, excellent goal they scored, so they can drive the ball in from afar, that's the free kick. Looked high in there, and then it comes, whipped away though. Well, Kilmarnock have been hemorrhaging goals in the past week in Scottish football, conceding 10 and all in a Coca-Cola and league game, so not the ideal preparation for a European tie, but I, I think there'll be a different kind of resolve altogether. Knocked round there by... Gus McPherson going away on that far side, there's a run forward. And the goalkeeper rightly committing himself. That's well, the Kilmarnock support in there. Not a huge journey, of course, across the Irish Sea for them. Kilmarnock won the Scottish Cup and conceded only two goals in the process, and that was in one game, so... Uh, the goalkeeper Dragoj Lekovic had five shutouts, which is remarkable for a cup competition. Looked like the head from Pat Nevin, uh, the referee letting the play go on. Billy Finlay, midfield player for Kamarnock, number five, trying to get there. Let me remind you, if you're just joining us, I know a lot of people are just coming in at this time, you're watching live, Shelburne against Kamarnock. Cup winners' cup with Kamarnock leading by two goals to one from the first leg. Kamarnik in the white shirts, blue shorts. Long high ball, which I, I doubt very much will bother this defense. Martin Baker putting it back. Player who just joined the club in the summer from the other Scottish club, Sid Mirren. Well, I certainly like the determined way that Jim McIntyre fought for that ball going forward. 
There he is, Jim McIntyre. As I said, they've had a lot of English experience, some of these players, and he started off with the Bristol City and played for Exeter as well. So he went back to Scotland to play for Edrionians. Uh, picked up uh, by Campbell. Oh, that's a high tackle. <laughs> well, like a wheelbarrow race, it turned out there as Mark Rutherford was chopped down. Mark Rutherford uh, comes from Birmingham, by the way. Came on loan from Birmingham City six years ago. And like any, well, like many people have come to Dublin, just decide to stay. Such a charming place. Ah, uh, well, that ball was partly wind-driven, and we will be having occasional showers. There's no question at all about that. Well, trying to put them off. Nice header there by Kevin McGowan. Kept his eye cleanly on the ball. Kevin McGowan, you watch him again, number 11 at the back, big tall player, local boy, one of the few local boys in this Ayrshire side. Headed away there by David Smith, playing in that right back position, on by the Frenchman Paul Vodikin. Oh, and I think you can tell right away this is going to be a fair old physical battle. Yeah, it's going to be tough going throughout. Just a little bit obvious again, and that's not going to pay off at all. Well, sadly for Kamarnock, Paul Wright on his form is one of the best goal scorers in Scottish football. And a club with limited resources anywhere not least uh, scotland or ireland can ill afford to lose one of their significant players well it seems they're deciding on from one goal mouth to the other missing out midfield well it's very sharp that's uh, again the frenchman pascal vodekin getting away with that Lays it back again, and he's taking a central part in midfield, it seems. Cooley brought down there by Billy Finley in midfield. Now, Riley. Nice little dummy there by Bacon on the outside and picked up by Baker. Look at the cluster of three players he's taken to the corner, and he wanted to touch it inside to the youngster, 20-year-old David Bagan. Goldie running forward, that was a, another little dummy again. Try to play a one-two there, Pat Nevin drifting in from the right-hand side. Well, just over eight minutes gone. And it is a bit hectic. Now, Nevin is certainly the kind of player that can come inside and introduce subtlety into the play. Shelburne, a club which has done extremely well in recent years. They won the, the Irish Championship eight times. So they have been in... Uh, the European Cup as representatives. And out comes the goalkeeper, Alan Goff. Hearing out after that. Five times, uh, an under-21 cap. Here's Rutherford going again. And wanted the ball played back to him. Cluster of Irish players. And I think offside. Riley 
I think realistically, obviously both clubs would like a long run in this competition, but I think realistically what they would uh, hope for at the very best is getting through this uh, tie and picking up an attractive tie uh, for the next round, which could earn them a few pennies. That's not damning with faint praise. I think it's being realistic, and I think both clubs realize that. Hooked away there by Baker. Well, if the game carries on like this, the team leading by two goals to what an aggregate, Kamaluk will be quite happy with it. They're not being put under any great pressure. Now, Kamaluk have always been renowned for having a very enthusiastic support. The kind which lifted them to their famous victory. Now, that's a bit of ball, the Frenchman. On he goes, Vatican. First real test there, and nobody, Rutherford, at the back there, a little bit slow to take advantage of that. I think the pace of the Irishman, on, of the uh, Frenchman on the right-hand side, actually made him go too fast, too far. Nobody in support. Here's Finlay. Plays right in the heart of midfield, Billy Finlay. McPherson putting that forward, that's a bit of ball down the outside. Good ball out there to Ali Mitchell. And good to see Mitchell coming back onto form. He was plagued by injury last season. 29 years of age. One of the loyal servants for the club. Been here at Kilmarnock for six seasons. Almost getting away with that. Good recovery work. Uh, by Rutherford again, he came back and defended well, and I think... Well, uh, for a moment I thought that might be a free kick there. All very tight down that uh, left-hand corner. Well, I think I was, I was talking to the commander manager, Bobby Williamson, and of course he agrees that uh, sometimes it's easier to play away from home than at home that's a big one. and a little bit of a, a push in fact I, I thought there might have even have been a sandwich there between the two Shelbourne defenders goalkeeper Alan Goff telling his players to get on field well the onus is on them of course and that could be a problem because I think in the first game they tended to play on the break. Mitchell trying to follow on after that. That ball uh, played back there by Geoghegan. Well, the, the white boots there of Tony Sheridan trying to go through. Well, no free kick there. I thought there might have been a, a collision with David Campbell. Playing in the heart of that defense for Shelburne. They get away with it, Bell. Well put through by Geoghegan. Now Vodekan. A tempting ball and coming from the outside. Mark Rutherford. That was the better attack so far. And clearly the danger is coming from this right-hand side. And the pace of the Frenchman at full back. And so Kamarnak trying to slow things down here, keep possession, get the balance again. Picked up by Riley, putting it out to Began. Another under-21 cap for Scotland. Well, he was under no real pressure there. Might be just a little bit nervous on this occasion. Held there by Geoghegan. And away by Fenlon. And playing Cooley at the back, McGowan. Scored the very first goal in the Scottish Cup campaign, McGowan. 
coming from defence. And at the back there's Raymond Gumry, the captain, the man, the longest serving player and the oldest player on the field. There he is, 35 years of age. And chasing in after that, Jim McIntyre. There he is. He played in the uh, a Scottish Cup final before the one this season when he came on as a sub for Airdrie against Celtic, a game they in fact lost. So he's got a runner's up and a winner's medal. The Frenchman seeing a lot of the play and Kamarnik on the counter attack. Going through there was Bergen. Nevin picking up here, looking dangerous. That's a useful ball inside of Bergen. Good run by the youngster. And that wasn't a bad ball from Nevin at all there. He saw the danger. And there's this uh, youngster coming through now, Dave Bergen. He's only 20. Played in all the cup games for Kamarnik. And he wasn't far away from that. Good counter-attack. And this youngster can obviously read the game very well. Nothing a manager likes better in the modern game than... A young player who knows when to run forward. Quicked in there by... Touched away. Sheridan trying to come back. Picked that up. All a bit tight in midfield. And the Irish defence looking just... A trifle flat at the back as Dave Smith puts it back to... A goalkeeper who obviously doesn't like the ball played to foot. So there might be a vulnerability there. 17 minutes now gone. Still nothing each. And that away goal that Shelburne scored has constantly been nagging the Kamarnock management. And I think they made it clear to the players that to win and go through, they will have to score themselves tonight. Free kick. Good position for Kamarnock, this. And the man, David Campbell, right in the heart of the defence there, 27 years of age, organising his defence. And again, another player who's played in England. He played for Huddersfield Town. There you are. That's his back to his number five there. Organising the defence. Nevin is there. Now, Nevin's a, a dab hand at this sort of thing. He's always been a very intelligent player. Great dribbler with a ball late to the side of the final shot there by McGowan. Well, I did say that he scored the first goal in the campaign that brought them the very long road uh, to this when they played in the Scottish Cup, and I think he's useful at coming up with hard shots like that. Look forward by Sheridan. Gus McPherson on the right-hand side of defence. Another regular, hardly misses a game, McPherson. There he is on the ball now. And the Montenegrin goalkeeper certainly knows how to play the ball with his feet. Emphatic clearance. So the commodic defensive performance in the Scottish Cup was the principal reason why they went through so successfully and the goalkeeper was part of that back in inside and well assistant referee had his flag up easily being knocked back there that time it was uh, ray montgomery who came forward Well, they were appealing for a free kick there. The referee, Portuguese referee, just waving play on. That was a slack ball picked up by Fenlon. Now forward by Campbell. Cluster of players there, and eventually it goes way behind. So, significantly, still no scoring in this match, which suits Kumarak.
what you can see from that replay there how wild the shot was they don't look to have any poise in front of goal and the Kermodic supporters on the far side certainly more vocal than the home support coming from a, a different kind of footballing environment where support is absolutely essential and the Kermodic supporters know how to back the team up Well, I hope the cameraman stays up there, that vertiginous camera shot there. It's right up there with uh, the pigeons. So, throw to be taken by Baker. Just in by McIntyre. Play, very scrappy and untidy in midfield at the moment. Dab forward, that's a better run forward by McIntyre. On the save and a shot and goal! Beautifully struck. Wonderful left-footed shot. That's exactly what the manager wanted. 21 minutes gone. Kamonic have taken the lead. And how vital it is to score away from home, especially when you're on a very slender lead, having conceded one. He controlled it well and drilled it in as i said he is the proud holder of a winners and a losers cup medal from the scottish cup finals he's played in and the goalkeeper had no chance that's a vicious one for a goalkeeper coming right across him let's look at him it dipped and swerved and perhaps uh well maybe a higher class goalkeeper would have got a touch over the bar but nevertheless beautifully struck Well, you'll hear the Kermodic voice, he's now halfway through this first half and it is going to be very difficult indeed for Shelburne to pull this back now. Although the spirit of the Irish will drive them on, I don't think I've ever seen an Irish team simply give up, and we know that in recent years, at national level. Of course, at club level, they haven't been particularly renowned to say the least but uh, they're always fighters in the best sense of the word and the referee having to stop the play at the moment well that's what uh, any coach would try to plan in a game away from home just uh, absorb a little bit of pressure try to keep the the ball off the opponents get one man up front as they they have been doing Pat Nevin's been tucked in behind and hope for a, a quick uh, busted goal. And so far it's uh, worked out splendidly for Kamarak. Well, that's Desi Baker. Not looking too happy at the moment. He's only a 19-year-old. He went up there with uh, the taller man, six feet two, of the Montenegrin, Dagro Lekovic. Uh, there he is. He was on Manchester United's books as a youngster. But of course, Manchester United go through so many uh, young lads. There's always some wastage and some disappointment. That's inevitable as Pat Nevin tried to come from the right-hand side. So uh, number eight, Desi Becker for Shelburne came into that category. But a good young player. Well, it's remarkable the transformation of a team's fortunes when they're dipping in, in domestic football, as Kamarnik certainly were. And then a new challenge comes along, and you need for a, a different kind of disciplined approach. And that's exactly what they've achieved tonight so far. There they are. They'll enjoy the Dublin hospitality, I'm quite sure, before the evening is out, if the scoreline remains something of the same. Number four, Neville there, Mick Neville played uh, for Derry City of course they played in the National League there and led 
this side to the national championship as well. Strong wind uh, coming to the advantage of Kamarik there. It's, it really has strengthened now. Well, the Boyne Kamarik supporters are really making the atmosphere now. That's not surprising. And coming back to defend uh, Pat Nevin. Loads of experience at the age of 33. Coming in, getting his uh, defence sorted out. And I think the performance will be largely defensive now. Really, this team have got to score three goals now, and that's hovering there. Just a little bit uh, overstruck that time. Mark Riley coming back to give some support. Pat Scully came in to try and take that. Up it comes to Sheridan again. I think they really need a goal in this first half. That's neatly played. That's Vodekin. Rutherford. And I think that's the right way to deal with an attack like that. Get it out of the danger zone. Playing the ball about beautifully now, Sheridan gets an opening. The commanding defence suddenly disappeared there. But he's put too much work in the ball. And back they come now. I don't think Bobby Williamson would be at all happy with the way they were dragged out of position there. Because this man, uh, Pascal Vordica, keeps busting forward. There he is again, a 29-year-old Frenchman hails from Paris and came to Ireland for the first time to play for Derry City well I think they really should uh, have learned the lesson from having watched uh, Kamarnock that that's the kind of ball that uh, Lekovic simply gobbles up. He's strong in the air again, a bit of freedom. And the ball blocked there by Ray Montgomery. Ten seasons with the club, still concentrating. Now here's Smith, played forward by Sheridan. Uh, the home crowd not at all happy, getting slightly restless. Youngster tried to beat that forward, Began. Matt has played almost 250 league games for the club. Neville there, just tucked in behind. Oh, he's got to get it to his right foot and pulls the man forward. Well, the, the goalkeeper for Komarnik. Lekovic has played with the right of uh, Mijatovic, whom we saw in the Spanish Super Cup uh, final, scoring gloriously. He's been in that uh, a Yugoslavian squad with him. And, of course, played for Real, Red Star Belgrade. So he is adequately experienced for an occasion like this. If you're just joining us, Shelbourne against Kilmarnock in the cup winners. And this time, Ray Montgomery taking no chances. The Frenchman comes up again, and Kilmarnock absorbing a little pressure, but there's always seemingly an extra defender to come across. That's good organization. The break by Baker. Began. Tried uh, to push it back there, but not strongly enough. Mark Riley, uh, Riley right in the middle of the field. He did very well to pick that up. ex motherball player. Cutting out Riley, putting it to Finlay. 
Finley goes forward, looks for the one, two and gets it. Looking for Began. Youngster using his right foot to that. There's the touch of the head and there might have been a little bit of pushing going on as well. And I think quite frankly it was by uh, Jim McIntyre. Watch how he goes for this year. I, I think uh, from that angle it looks as if the Neville was falling back into him. Remember after this game uh, with uh, Shelburne in the red and Kamara get a white, we'll be watching that. Our recorded highlights from where we were last night in the stadium in France of Paris Saint-Germain. Incredible game. Nevin, that could be touched as well. Bagan coming in from the outside. And this Irish defence having given that relatively early goal away are now looking rather fragile when the ball is played across goal. I think Killy might have a, a, another goal in them, in fact. Oh, by the way, when I, I say Killy, Killy uh, for all our other viewers around uh, uh, the UK and Europe, Killy is the affectionate name for Kamarnock. And you hear that uh, name being chanted away in the background there. Well, each of his clearances have been out of play or just stayed in their backspin. Ball played away forward by Fenlon. But too often the Irish are now being caught in midfield. Well, it does show the loyalty of uh, supporters because Kamarnock, to be frank, have had a very bad week in Scotland. But they've rallied behind them, as you can hear in the background. And it always helps a team abroad when you have that kind of support. Strongly headed back by Finlay, playing rather defensively at the back of midfield. There's a pace forward again. Daisy Baker, lovely ball inside. Up came Rutherford. One of the better moves. And I, I do think that uh, Montgomery was very angry. I think it must have been with the, the assistant referee in the far side. He thought it might have been offside. Looking across, there he is looking across at the assistant linesman. Sadly, too much freedom given to Baker. There he is coming, Mark Rutherford, who's looked very impressive, very speedy, as I said. He comes from Birmingham. Uh, he's been three seasons here now, 25. And he was the second highest goal scorer in the cup campaign that Shelburne had. 12 minutes from half time. Kamarnik is not exactly easing the way through this game, but looking relatively comfortable. Oh, there's a bit of freedom here for McIntyre. Still has the ball in play. Decided just to hold it towards him until he got uh, support there. Here's McPherson. I said he had five years at uh, Ibrooks with Rangers. For coming to Kamarnock. Now Finley. This is right, just... I think intent in keeping possession. Well, that seemed like a fairly crunching tackle in midfield to me.
Longer ball there by McGowan. Pat Nevin hasn't been in the play all that much, but doesn't really need to be. If he can turn on the style over a couple of minutes or so, and he's perfectly capable of that, there he goes. Just a little bit too much for him. Nevin, a wonderful, a kind of, you know, uh, when you watch them playing, a throwback to the old days when Scotland used to produce wonderful dribblers with the balls, small men, um, especially on the wing. Nevin, of course, went from Clyde uh, to Chelsea, made his mark there. Just uh, caught out of position. There's a, a neatness to the play of uh, Desi Becker, I must admit, but I think Kamarnik have appreciated the danger in advance and they're closing him down very quickly indeed. There he is, Desi Becker. He actually won uh, when he was playing across at Old Trafford, the English Youth League and Cup but eventually never fully settled there. Straight through to golf, and I'll tell you, <laughs> that looked as if he just got it. The pace of the ball, the skid of the ball, almost deceiving him. Tagged there by Never, that was more like him. Nicely picked up by Mitchell, who'd done all the running. They want to cut it back. And well read there. Campbell coming back just to nick it away from him. Kamarnik still in attack. This is McPherson this time. Couldn't get enough uh, loft in that all the same. Played out there by Riley. McPherson. I think another goal in this half would kill it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Nevin, beautifully flicked to the outside, in he goes into the box, and too strong with that. Well, the ball, the wind kept the ball in play, in fact, Began got it back, and played rather too casually by Martin Baker. Now the break, Fenlon. Gets it forward to Sheridan. Over there by Smith. A little bit obvious that. And hooked away by Martin Baker. Good signing this, uh, Baker for Kamarnock. As I said, they have limited funds. Well, which club outside of, of Rangers and Celtic and Scotland doesn't? No, beyond Rutherford. Uh, and they got uh, that player I was talking about from St. Mary. He's only 23. He's at 10 caps at under 21 level. So I think he'll turn into a very reliable player. Well, Kamarnock play in a league, it's not the Bundesliga and it's certainly not Serie A, but it has its own privations and it's very difficult to stay in the Premier Division simply because it's, uh, in my view, too small. The 10 who's given away! What a blunder! Lekovic gives the Irish a chance. Quite unbelievable, the ball played across there. And the player we've been talking about Desi Baker puts him back in a hunt this is dreadful what on earth was he thinking about and dragged out of goal he was punished and Shelburne are back in it with about five minutes to go to halftime I, I don't think Baker could could credit it but then he steadied himself and stuck it away A dreadful goal to lose at this stage. Kamarnock on the attack again, though. So the Yugoslav International shows you that goalkeepers of quality can still make enormous blunders. Oh, I think the Kamarnock players will be angered by that.
Well, they seem to be knocked. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if they'll be knocked off the balance, but one thing is, Nardis are not going to look a, a gift horse in the mouth. They'll come back very strongly after that. Well, you had a glimpse of the players there, and they, they can hardly credit what's happened. They were playing comfortably, well within themselves, in fact. Uh, the defence, which has been torn asunder recently, looked as if it had tanked itself up, looked much more disciplined. And then suddenly, such a goal as would make the goalkeeper want the earth to open up and swallow him. Well, he's still there. Now he'll have to redeem himself because uh, I'm quite sure as these Shelburne supporters have been given a new lease of life. The gentleman I'm talking about, Dragozhev Lekovic, will now be put under pressure. There are simply some goalkeepers who hate uh, the ball played. Uh, to feet in a pass back like the Irish goalkeeper here, Alan Goff. Now, the very first touch of the ball that Lekovic had with his feet was treated positively, and you could almost deduce from that he was going to be all right in that category, and then the sudden rush of blood to the head. This is the final tussle going on here between David Smith and the red shirt for Shelburne and the youngster, Dave Began. I like the look of Began. Ball just gone out though, go kick. Well, what can a manager say to a player who's done that? Uh, he's got another 45 minutes to go, doesn't want to make things even worse than they are. Although I don't think the conversation will be all that placatory. Well, they've given too much up, and again, Baker going in, and who's coming from the far side? Rutherford, just about a couple of feet too late. Now, somehow or other, uh, given what has happened, that this man snapped the goal very quickly. He's elusive, he's quick, but somehow or other, they will have to close him down, get better marking than that. And now the game remains finely balanced. Flicked on by Began. Oh, I think it, we're seeing the evidence of a team that's ever so slightly shell-shocked. Ball's been given away too easily. Began, uh, ball flicked out to Riley. Riley now. They're getting players back very well all the same. Began. Tries to nick it through the middle. Looking for a little one-two there. And nobody. Began had cut inside. I think they'd expected him to pop up on the left wing, but he had gone inside to graft away there. Man running down there, Ali Mitchell. Another experienced player, 29 years. Solid player in midfield. So go kick. Well, having presented him with that gift, this game could go anyway now. However, the consolation for Kamarnik is they have scored an away goal. Free kick. Portuguese referee right on top of that. That's Rutherford. Goal scorer from the first game. Now Smith almost got it through. Just being 
uh, caught on the ball too often, putting too much work on it in midfield. Began sticking to this left wing. Kamada got out of that well all the same. I think they'll be glad uh, to hear the whistle at this stage just to go in and steady themselves. Have a chat with each other about uh, maybe they should draw a very quick veil over what happened there. It's sort of retrievable anyway. Began. Good run forward there by McIntyre. That's an excellent ball. And Pat Nevin. I don't think he scored many goals in his career with his head, but he was in there like a flash. And that's experience for you who kept up with the play. And in he came. One of the smallest men in the field. Tried to nip in there and get the header in. And it almost came off. Rain lashing down at the moment as this turned out by Began. Conditions quite tricky then. I think uh, the surface will be greasy. Although absolutely no excuse for what happened to uh, Lekovic. Really is a bit of a thunderstorm at the moment. That's neatly brought down there by Mitchell. Played wide, Began again. Back to that right foot and uh, Neville coming forward. That's all he could do. As the rain is so intense, people now trying to get under cover. Neat little stadium, this. Excellent pitch. And quite apart from the, the occasional cloud burst, the conditions couldn't be better. That gives you an idea of what they have to face up to. Trying a near post one and uh, real congestion of players there. They still can't clear it. That's pushed away. Well into stoppage time. Well, I think the, the dignitaries, who I said the, the Prime Minister of the country, the Lord Mayor, are getting a right soaking across there as the halftime whistle goes. So it's one each in a very wet Dublin. And here, my Irish friends telling me it never rains in Dublin. Well, there we are. And it's uh, something of a thunderclap for Komarik in that dreadful lapse by Lekovic, which gave them the equaliser. Score at halftime, one each. The rain still lashing down in Dublin. We're at halftime in the Cup Winners' Cup game between Shelbourne and Kamarak. The score one each at halftime. Kamarak having uh, taken uh, a lead in the first game by two goals to one. An astonishing equaliser for the Irish after that early goal by Kamarak uh, and a lapse of attention by Lekovic, giving them uh, a leeway there. So one each at um, halftime. We'll be back to see the second half live. Meanwhile, we're going to have a look at Sports Centre, introduced tonight by Simon Barlow. Shelburne Stadium in Dublin, where Shelburne and Kilmarnock are drawing one each at halftime. The rains have uh, descended, almost like a monsoon. And as I said uh, just before we went for our first break, break almost a thunderclap that broke over Kilmarnock when they gifted an equaliser, snapped up by Daisy Baker, just before the end of the... Uh, first half after a wonderful strike by Jim McIntyre. One each on the night, 3-2 still an aggregate to Killy. We'll be back in a moment.
these the goals scored in the first half ball played inside there and there he's fighting back after the glorious strike by McIntyre good confidence start by Kamarnik in the game and in a few moments of course we'll be watching the second half live and here this terrible blunder by Lekovic and in step Desi Becker to notch the equalizer A stunned Kilmarnock side after this. It looks safe enough. It should have been cleared well downfield. Totally misjudging it. And very smartly driven in for all that. Well, the youngster who started off with Manchester United and didn't quite make it. Showing how sharp you can be in front of goal. Kamarnock still coming forward as the heavens began to open and the heavy rain started to come down. Pat Nevin coming in there. As I said at the time, the smallest man on the field virtually and almost getting in there to score with his head. And I welcome back uh, to a live coverage of the second half. The scores still one each, and of course, uh, Kilmarnock still leading on aggregate by three goals to two. And I'm sure Shelburne inspired by that goal. Well, if the Irish have any sense, and I'm sure they have, they must really put Lekovic under some pressure now. Now, the man might recover from that. But they, they really have to test him out and see if his nerve has been shattered by it. That was the rather tentative head back there that time. Good first uh, 25 minutes for Kamarnock, which inspired the very voluble support here. Played across there by Riley. The ball went very hard in midfield. Uh, picked up there by Sh by Fenlon who came forward. Back in Todd drifts and that's a beautiful ball. Began going for it. Pitch a bit heavy on that far side. He almost turns the ball into his right hand side. Little bit of hesitation in the Irish defence, but eventually cleared there by Gagan. Well, Kamarnock have performed uh, one or two miracles in Europe in the past. That marvellous victory they had over Eintracht Frankfurt. Then they held Real Madrid to 2-0 in the European Cup in the first leg. Rather taken apart in the second leg, but a very good performance in the first. So they have something of a heritage. Here's Pat Nevin. Nicely played across there and slides away from everybody. Well, both sides giving the ball away far too easily. McIntyre tried to nick that forward, seeing the space. Sheridan. That'll be a free kick. The man going down there, Tony Sheridan. So, this will be taken by Fenlon as the captain goes forward. Mick Neville. An early go here. Now, there's the test. A greasy ball. And Lekovic gets up to it very well. Gagan. Uh, Bagan. 
Good tackling that by Neville, saw the danger. Really is very quick. Again, he tries to go down the left-hand side. Simple but effective clearance there. Want to take that very quickly. And it really is the Irish side who have to make the running in this. They're still trailing on aggregate. And the important thing for Kamarik is they have scored that away goal, but they can't afford to give the ball away like that. Well, Gus McPherson making a terrible error again in defence. Rutherford tries to go forward, and that's just touched away. Shot at goal, just wide. And the Irish putting Kamarik under pressure immediately. David Campbell picked that up very well. Not an easy ball to take coming across his body. Scored a very important goal in the semi-final. Here he comes. Took it on the half drop and away it went. And at the moment it's looking promising for Shelburne. No free kick. Picked away there by Scully. Chased there by Vodekin. The... French player who impressed a great deal in that first half a lot of good runs up the right hand side taken there by Lekovic confidently Lekovic has been three years with the club now and nobody running forward for Kamarak just too far beyond Jim McIntyre Straight out of play. Now, what I did like about Kamarik in the first uh, half was when it really mattered. They did hold on to the ball intelligently. Played it around very neatly. But, of course, as anybody will tell you in Europe, even the most experienced teams, you cannot afford a lapse of concentration. So many British clubs have suffered as a result through the years of that. That's an ambitious-looking ball. No chance for Ali Mitchell to get onto that. Up in the air by Montgomery. Well, the higher balls won't bother him at all. McGowan, very good in the air. As I said, one of the local boys in the team, although he's also played for St. Johnston and St. Mirren. He's a tall player at the back. Number 11. If you're just joining us, uh, that's the scoreline at the moment. Kamarak won the first leg 2-1. Thus, they are up an aggregate. And Shelburne playing in the red. And that's out of play. Well, certainly Kamarak were not overconfident as a result of the rather poor form domestically recently. But there was a look of determination about them when I saw them. And I think they'll recover from what was just one of these lapses that happen occasionally. I've seen that happening to goalkeepers before. Simply giving the ball away. This is the man who scored a goal in the first leg. Rutherford back to Baker. Need a play there this time. Gee again. And to Rutherford and well tackled there by McGowan coming forward. Gets it out of the danger zone all right. Nevin. Well, the first touch, letting Kamarnock down. Well, they've had to defend in the first three minutes of this half rather grimly, but now they want to try and get possession in midfield. Well, at least they're fighting hard. Way that far side is Vodakin again, and that's a wasted ball forward. <laughs> a 
Neville putting that down. And I think they look uh, a much more dangerous side, Shelburne, when they play the ball wide and uh, try and get Mark Rutherford on the left into action. There's uh, Bobby Williamson standing there, the Kamarak manager. Former player, Clyde Bank, Rangers. And hooked away. Baker got into it that time. Martin Baker. Now, this is a trying moment for the Scotty side. There's no doubt about it. They have the initiative. That was the goal scorer, Desi Baker, sliding in too late. Looked like a little bit of a jersey pull again and appeals for hands. Pat Nevin raising his aloft. Now, Began. Riley just taking his time about it. Over to Finlay. As I said, he was playing mostly defensively. Uh, Gus McPherson a little bit too strong, that. Now, their covering has improved in this half as Pat Scully takes that away. Not a bad ball, and he's looking dangerous, is he not? The little man who started with Manchester United, and it might have been a, a tiny deflection. What's the referee given? Now he's given the goal kick. I think Baker is claiming there was a deflection here. He is the danger man. Well, difficult to tell from that angle. But he was given far too much latitude in the last 20 minutes of the game. They really have to put him in the hip pocket. But it has to be said, he's looking infinitely more dangerous than any of the Kamada players going forward at this juncture in the game. Almost 10 minutes uh, gone into the second half. Now, played inside a cab ball with a rather ambitious and optimistic shot at go. That won't bother the Kamada defense at all if they start to play like that. That's the man who drove that in. David Campbell came from uh, St. Patrick's Athletic to this club. And as I said, like many of the players, has uh, dabbled in the English League. He was with Huddersfield Town. Just got that away from Rutherford. There's McPherson. His better play, more constructive. Mitchell going deep and they can't afford to give the ball away like that. It's picked up by Sheridan and you could see that Baker ran onside there, leaving Rutherford to pick it up. And wisely, the corner kick conceded by Martin Baker. Still one each, still come on a lead and aggregate, 3-2. And away across to the far side. for the corner kick up comes Vodica headed across Rutherford tried to get in there too many Kamada defenders though but not getting it back into midfield here's Sheridan again Kamada living very dangerously goalkeeper should be committed to that and is while well, he owes one or two favours to his mates now for this player after doing what he did these things are inexplicable of course they just happen in a football match almost got that ball through to McIntyre well tucked away there by Vodica Fenlon trying and long and that was a difficult one because it did touch the ground before it reached Lekovic and he did very well to get his body behind it Look at the touch there. That's uh, technically a very sound save indeed. And a very timely one by the goalkeeper.
And there's a free end of the goal. Nobody covering there at all. Baker getting it off the line. And they're scrambling the ball anywhere. And oh dear, the marking in that Kilmarnock defence. Ball coming across and watch the header, the free header it go. They'll do well to hold out at this spell. Looked as if the ball had gone out, but uh, referee waving play on. And Kamara simply must get better possession in midfield. Oh dear, that's a poor pass forward. No chance of uh, McIntyre fastening onto that. And the initiative clearly with the Irish at this stage of the game. Flags being driven straight out there by this quite fierce wind and rain. McIntyre. They get on the outside. And he was offside. They had only one chance to put the ball through to the left-hand side. I was talking about Kamarnock's uh, past and the very impressive victories they've had in European games. They, of course, go right back to the, the old Fears Cup when they were first introduced to European football. Well, Baker, it may look a very wild shot, but the least you can say uh, about that is that he was in there. Very sharp indeed. Kamara not making any contact at the moment. Looking quite disorganized and somehow they have to get to grips with themselves. Irish thinking of making a substitution. Oh, this Kamara side is simply putting the ball, uh, longer balls forward, more in hope than anything else. And that cohesion they showed in the first half seems to be slipped away from them. They're battling away all right, but there's no shape to them. So 15 minutes into the second half. And it's been something of a siege on that Kamara Gomath. Just uh, touched away from Pat Nevin there, and Nevin, I'm quite sure, will want the ball held a, bit, a little bit more by players in midfield and try to get back to that neat passing game that they showed in the first half. I think if that goal had not been conceded in, in the first half, you might have seen the very opposite of what we're seeing at the moment. This is Nevin at his best, and just a little bit slow. He is very elusive, or certainly was in his best in the game. There's a bit of space here. Megan again comes forward. He's quite prepared to hold on to the ball. Although the Irish have identified him as a real uh, pest on that left-hand side. And that's too much. Easy ball for the goalkeeper, Goff. A little bit of slip there. McGowan coming right across. Baker, elusive as ever. Turning out to be perhaps the most promising player in the field. Kamarnock on the break. Driving forward, Alan Mitchell. Uh, Megan. It's not all that easy out there for either set uh, of players. Conditions being what they are. Ball just held up. And the goalkeeper being put under pressure. There's the shot and goal and driven away by Goff. I think hand and knee got to it there. Real chance that for Kamarnock. Nicely, beautifully held in fact there by McIntyre. And he's brought down. Nice control, first touch. 
And that's how they got rid of it. Now here was the chance coming up. And eventually just at the back of the goalkeeper, it was in fact David Smith who made that clearance. So, to the side it goes and that is not the best free kick I've ever seen. Well, they won't be happy with uh, taking it like that. Herbert, Kamarnock is still in this competition. I think we're about to have a substitution. Yes, the Irish uh, making the substitution. So it's uh, Giergen, Stephen Giergen, who's coming on this time as Pasco Vodeke goes off. Giergen uh, has been the National League's top scorer for the past two seasons. And he scored in the two last two cup finals that they Shelburne played in. So a very prolific goal scorer has come on. And he was in the Republic of Ireland squad for the game against Macedonia. There he is, getting his first little touch of it. And they realise the importance of having a good striker and an attacker on at this stage of the game. They're still trailing. They may be playing the better of the two sides at the moment, but the statistics are harsh to accept. They're still out of this competition, and that will be taken by Lekovic. Well, judging from these tackles and the way the ball is being bashed around out there, you could describe this as a very hard physical battle. And of course, it will suit Kamana to try to keep the ball. There's McPherson. Oh, he slid, I think. Gus McPherson clearing that downfield. I said about uh, the man who just cleared that, he's hardly missed, hardly ever misses a game for Kamarnock. Played over 300 games for the club. And that's uh, number five, Billy Finley, by the way. Started off with Hibernian in Edinburgh before he came to Kamarnock. So, 20 minutes into this half, and it has been a... A dangerous one to say the least for Kamarak. Just seems to be a, a bit more bite and drive about Shelburne in the midfield. You can see the way they went to win possession there. Right, but McPherson. That's taken away to Nevin. Now, apart from anything else, Nevin has the experience to be talking to the players out there. He knows exactly what he's doing. Played for Chelsea, Everton, then on to Tranmere, and back up to Scotland. Well, the one thing about uh, McIntyre after that goal, he's stuck to his task all right. The pitch is getting very heavy. There's Bagan. Tries to get uh, McIntyre back into the game again. Uh, Nevin won't get that ball. I know he came up for a header in the first half, but the ball has got to be played to Nevin's foot. Anybody who's watching in England will know that Nevin at his very best for Chelsea. You gave him the ball and then... He started to weave between defenders. Now, obviously, he's not the, the same player he was at his height. But he's still got the ability. Driving forward is Pat Scully. Well, the shooting, I suppose, uh, thankfully, Kamarak has been very wild indeed.
That's uh, Gergen who came on the substitute. Almost an up and under. The person did well to keep his eye on that. That's Nevin. Well, the goalkeeper dealt more capably with it than he did in the first half. McPherson back there. And at least it was to the right-hand side of Lekovic. He doesn't like the ball played to the left. And a free kick, I think. Free kick to Komarnik. As Fenlon. Pat Fenlon. Also played for Chelsea, by the way. One of the others with the... English connection. Look at the way the wind held the ball. Gergen away with it. Or just placed in a path there by McGowan. This is Gergen. Rutherford picks it up. And there by Gergen. The two Gergens in the field now. Number three, number ten. That's good control. He's had a very good game left on his own greatly and gives the ball away. Couldn't judge the what the pitch was like. There's good play by Nevin. McIntyre with it. He needed a little bit of support in there as well. Kamarnik still on the attack and that's a difficult ball for Goff to take. Got his body right behind that. Now, this man shouldn't be left on a one-and-one. One. Certainly from a commanding point of view. Just about uh, 20 minutes of the game remaining. Baker. Nothing very pretty about the way they're trying to clear the lines, and I, I do think they should try to be just a little more constructive by the law of averages and the rate of possession they're putting themselves uh, into danger every time the ball is simply given away to the red shirts of Shelburne. Oh, good run forward there, and a, a little bit of a jump, but it was a free kick. I don't think there was any doubt about that. Pat Fenlon going right in. Now, this could be very dangerous indeed. Certainly fouled there, and he just gave that little extra leap at the end. But right on the edge of the precipice, you might say, Kilmarnock. Now, the shot of a gag in there. Fenlon's there as well. And let's see how adept they are in this situation. Onus on Lekovic, just over. He did well to get up, and I think he might have had that covered. Just uh, a slight misjudgment. Fenlon and Didu took that. Only solitary attacking now by Kamarik. But they cannot allow themselves to be defending across their 18-yard line. Got to push forward a bit more. Nevin. Offside. That line looked very flat all the same. And Ali Mitchell almost uh, came up and picked it up. Good ball played out there by Sheridan. And the ball given away. Taking that Martin Baker. It's at one positive uh, situation in this game on the goal line, clearing that uh, header. Campbell. He's got a fair dig. Forward by Gergen. Well, if they can play coolly like that, 
it does bring about uh, touches of inspiration they're just playing a little bit of football in conditions and in an atmosphere perhaps not conducive to subtlety but little touches like that show they can still knock the ball around intelligently well lacking support again Baker and uh, really Ali Mitchell was standing rather too static that time just inside him Riley beavered away the back of midfield for Kamarnock and Pat Nevin having wandered away across to the far side from right to left trying to uh, introduce a little touch of the unexpected just vary the play a little well the Kamarnock supporters are getting a, a right old drenching across on the far side but they have been a great vocal encouragement to their team really a credit out shouting the local support well a desperate uh, clearance there with Mitchell he had possession while they have been slightly apprehensive there might be a rather munching of uh, fingernails there in the far side but they've kept up the vocal encouragement Ball well, here played to David Smith. And back. Just touched away there from uh, Sheridan. Sheridan has seen a, a lot of the play in this game. And that's well wide. Shot in there by the captain, McNeville. Not bothering the goalkeeper. Fifteen minutes remaining. Kelly still leading on aggregate. Another goal by Shelburne. And this game could go into extra time. Both managers, of course, have prepared uh, meticulously for this. A game coming, a very crucial European game coming so early in the season for them. Shelburne had played uh, three English clubs and pre-season friendlies to warm them up for this. Now Neville. Oh, look at this. Shelburne player tucked in behind the commander defence. He just got that away. Finley trying to get that away downfield. And now the Irish crowd beginning to roar encouragement. Sensing the game reaching its uh, climax. But the pattern has been the same right from the start with the Shelburne team pressing forward almost parked in the Kamana half and uh, the number 12 there Jim McIntyre plying a, a lone roll up front virtually and doing it very well holding on to the ball exceptionally well lays it off neatly but midfield hasn't been coming up quickly enough to give them support in the second half it was so different in the first McPherson just happy to get it away there. Still in play though. There's a better run forward. Mitchell with it. Had to get that ball in early. This time he does. Can it be cut back and too quickly? McIntyre. He did everything right until he chose to try to cut it back to Nevin there. Well, when you make that run like that, and there's so many players around you, the final pass has got to be very precise. Although credit to uh, Gagan for getting back very quickly, cutting that off. Nevin. 
Wants his ball to hold on to it. Well, Pat Nevin is obviously not as fit as he used to be. The sparkle has uh, faded somewhat, but he is, on a night like this, the kind of uh, player who could suddenly turn it on for two or three minutes. So there's always a potential there for danger for the Shobun defence. Very slippery now. Headed away by Baker. Oh, there's a free one now, now. Can Baker put it away? Great save this time. This time it was Desi Baker. The Irishman getting away and Lekovic did very well to narrow the angle. Well, having made that awful blunder and put his side under the cosh again, you could say he has slightly redeemed himself. There may have to be more of that to follow, though, with another 12 minutes remaining. Well, they'll have to compete, and they knew they would have to compete with the physical nature of this side. Now, this is good keeping. He had to play it away to the wider side of the goalkeeper, but he had it well covered. Now, that was a dangerous tackle to make on the edge of the box, but it came off. The rain now as bad as it's been. And it's something like a deluge on top of that Kilmana Gilmouth coming in the shape of the red shirts now. Constant bombardment. And the pressure is eased, as you can hear that uh, loud cheer of relief from the blue and white throng across on the far side offside another substitution kind of uh, last throw of the dice here is number 15 Tony McCarthy comes on again he's had experience in uh, English football with Colchester and Millwall so we've got uh, a lot of players whose motto might have been how boots will travel good seasoned professionals playing at this level and playing in abysmal conditions where the owner's still on the Irish to make uh, the running and save this tie well anything could happen it's, it's really awful out there and I think there is a danger but the Irish team may overhit the ball. Well, they get the corner there. The referee saying a deflection. They might tend to overhit it. Well, I came off of them there, okay. So 19-year-old Desi Baker, goal scorer, and who just had that chance a couple of minutes ago with a corner. Oh, it's just beyond the head of Sheridan. Now they're all parked in the penalty area. Played out to Giergen. And that is just beyond Baker again. And he might have hurt himself going right into that uh, concrete wall just at the back. Well, uh, he'll want to carry on. Well, unfortunately, our, our cameras are suffering from the rain as well. Nothing much we can do about that. We really kind of uh, look through a, a veil of rain at this. Rutherford, an enticing ball into the middle. And they just scramble it away again, again. Baker was in, in the middle of that, hooked away by Riley. And it is now as incessant as the rain. Just pushed away by Raymond Gummery. And I wonder at the age of 35, and in these conditions, a very heavy pitch out there. But these legs are now beginning to tire. There's the header at goal and Lekovic coming forward there. Sheridan got right up. And again, Tony Sheridan played for Coventry City. 
fact, uh, made his league debut against Leeds United and made a great impression, Sheridan. That's number nine in the Shelburne side. Uh, now that's the kind of player I was talking about from Nevin. Held on to it a little bit too much there, but he carved out that opening well. Now uh, here's Finlay. Nevin. Simple little dab forward. And at least Kilmarnock keeping possession. Cute little ball again. Oh, an excellent tackle. Gagan came right across there. He had to make that. But uh, at any rate, Kilmarnock have held possession. They've moved the game away from their goal mouth. And that's the most basic thing they could do at a time like this. Remember, after we see this game, whatever it reaches its conclusion, it could go into extra time, of course. We'll be seeing highlights of one of the most remarkable performances I've seen in Europe when we were in the Parc de Prince last night to watch Paris Saint-Germain. So. Six minutes left. Well, <laughs> they've tried everything they've done, the Irish, in this second half, and the referee has allowed the play to go on. It goes behind the goal. Now, this uh, player, Rutherford, has looked very useful on this left-hand side. And from a strictly commando point of view, I think he must be delighted he didn't get the service he really ought to have received in the match. Well, they want him off. That close-up there gives you an idea of the drenching that this pitch has received. I don't think he'll be off for too long, all the same. I, he's, he really is in agony, and I don't think he would go off at this stage where he's not suffering intensely. And uh, Hugh Allen, the physio for both Kilmarnock and uh, the Scottish national side found they're attending him well Ali Mitchell have gone right forward for that a little bit of wrestling going on between the two players now neatly picked up there Nevin almost got through and that's this excellent player Rutherford in this left hand side showing his defensive qualities as well playing it longer this time that could be a useful ball and there was a bit of pushing going on there yes free kick to Shelbourne just about four minutes remaining and it's slipping away from the Irish. Mark Riley trying to nick in the inside. Given away. That eases the pressure again. Back to Baker. On to Riley. Well, they're appealing for a free kick. The referee waving play on. It's picked up again by this dangerous player, Sheridan. On it goes to the right-hand side. Gagan. Sheridan. Looks for a little one two, and he did get it there. Peels for offside. And uh, I think the assistant referee right on the spot that time. Well, you could see from that replay that as the ball was played back, he was offside. Now, it's been very physical right from the start. They expected this. Another Kilmarnock uh, casualty done there, this time Riley. Oh, he is in agony. 
and I make it uh, three minutes. It will be maybe two, three minutes of stoppage time. And at this moment in time, Kilmarnock is still in the Cup Winners' Cup. Shelburne are not. And the voices of the Ayrshire crowd are now beginning to be heard again. As I said, it'd been a marvellous support. On the other hand, I, th I think they got very nervous in the last uh, ten minutes or so. And off limps Mark Riley. Now, he wouldn't give in at this stage unless it was uh, pretty serious. The one thing they would not want is to lose the shape. And that's why they, they have to hold on to the players while they can. The Irish making another substitution. It looks like Dean Fitzgerald who's coming on here. 21-year-old uh, player. Hasn't made uh, all that many appearances. Only played three times last season. And that long straight ball into the Kamarnock defence will just simply lend itself to straightforward defending as well. It's when the ball is played in the ground like this that they're turning out to be more dangerous. There's Big Ferson. Hooked away there by Scully. Shouts coming from both benches here, exhorting the players on it must have been very tiring remember a very early season game they played a lot of football already and this heavy pitch has been sapping them touched away there by Mitchell now inside to Sheridan now he can't play the ball about intelligently Rutherford knocked away by McPherson who I think under ordinary circumstances may have been taken off or volunteered to go off but not in a situation like this I think only amputation would stop that man from playing for his club now this is his first taste of Europe it's very special and he is making a special contribution he's clearly uh, very handicapped out there and now we're into stoppage time So little time yet to save this game, but they can. There's stoppage time to take into consideration. And they've given everything for the manager, the Irish. As I said, that long high ball into the Achilles defense has been the least of their problems in this match. Down to Goff. Well, both central defenders, uh, McGowan, and uh, well, the, the whole back uh, formation there has been quite outstanding. Baker, McPherson, McGowan, Montgomery. And so nervous for the manager down there on the left-hand side. Bobby Williamson, there's the Irish support. So little left of the game now. And that uh, youngster, Dave Began, we'll hear a lot more about him in the future. He's only 20, under 21 cap. And he has been waspish in the way he's gone at this defence tonight. Uh, Substitution. Now, played out to Rutherford. Just shuffling the ball away, almost giving it back to him, though. Excellent play by Rutherford. He's had a lot of football in him. And perhaps one of the surprises of the game, he hasn't uh, had as much service. Off the referee that time. Bang goes his free pint of Guinness. We're now... For the Kilmarnock supporters, agonizingly, well into stoppage time, and there's no predicting when the final whistle will go when you take that into account. Now he has to make ground here. 
Well, that's good running off the ball on the outside by Fenlon. Really is a strong player, but the ball just pushed away from him by Montgomery. And they're trying to lift the Kamarnock team. They have looked uh, tired the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Means an enormous amount financially to both clubs. And they just put that away almost anywhere. All eyes on the Portuguese referee. Just tucked inside. No free kick. And then the ball taken away. Mitchell. Putting it away down there. Brilliantly hooked back there. Campbell had to retrace his steps. Wonderful uh, clearance that under real pressure. And now we're three and a half minutes, as you can see, into stoppage time. Rain lashing down windswept ground and above it all the roars of the commander crowd trying to lift them for the last few seconds of this game and there it goes commander go through an aggregate and bobby williamson remains commendably impassive and i'm sure underneath that uh, facade he's bubbling they've done it not the prettiest game i've ever seen in europe a hard slog, there's one of the great players, uh, I'm sure, for the future of the Republic at uh, national level, Daisy Baker, the man who snapped that goal. So, a draw on a night, and how valuable that first goal, that first marvellous strike by Jim McIntyre. That's what really led the way. Well, I spoke to Bobby Williamson, and he had prepared himself thoroughly for this game. And Robert Burns, whose uh, poetry was established in Kamarnock, once said, the best laid schemes of ice and men, gang after Glaive. But not tonight, they did. Perfect for Kamarnock from Archie McPherson. Goodbye. <laughs>